pictures that we're receiving from uh, the Dartford crossing in uh, East London. Two climate protesters who brought the crossing basically to a standstill have now agreed, we understand, to climb down from uh, the bridge. Uh, the police had brought in a platform which they were going to use to in some sort of operation to bring them down. Uh, the men from the Just Stop Oil Group climbed uh, the bridge yesterday, forcing the closure of the crossing, which is the only way to cross the Thames east of London by road. Our climate change and energy correspondent, Hannah Thomas-Peter, is in the newsroom. And Hannah, this would not have been an easy operation for the police, but they needed to do something because this protest has caused traffic chaos. Absolute chaos. I mean, it's been shut for two days, um, the Dartford crossing, causing miles of tailbacks and hours and hours uh, of delays as uh, these two men from the Just Stop Oil um, protest group uh, climbed up quite close to the top of the bridge and locked themselves on. I think what we can see here is the removal of one of the protesters whose name is Marcus. He hasn't given his second name to Sky News, but he's 33 years old and he is a teacher. Um, being brought down now by Essex Police, who've actually just released a, a, a statement on, on Twitter from Chief Superintendent Simon Anslow, who said, I know that this situation is incredibly frustrating, but we're doing everything possible to resolve this situation as quickly and safely as possible. But we are not in any way anti-protest. However, it is unacceptable for people to think that they can put lives in danger and selfishly stop others going about their lives, and the public rightly expect us to take action against anyone who believes they can do this and and we will. So what's happened in this situation is the Just Stop Oil protesters um, have been in contact with the police. Um, they've had, they've, I've spoken to, to, to one of them. Um, they carried a number of ropes up the bridge. I understand that those ropes weren't actually long enough to get them down safely. And so they've been in contact with the police about how to, how to come down. And the Essex police agreed that they would provide a cherry picker. Um, in order to do so as safely as possible. The person who's still up, up in the bridge is a man called Morgan Trolland, and he is 39 years old, and he is a bridge engineer. And earlier in the day, um, I interviewed him about why he was doing this. I'm doing this because now's the moment for civil resistance. We've got two to three years left to turn this, this around. Otherwise, you know, everything we love is, is, is gone, is dying for the rest of our lives. So, so that's why we're taking these drastic actions right now. Yeah, and the pictures, uh, Hannah, that we're seeing now is of uh, one of them coming down. And the protests, essentially, well, they did say they were going to stay up there until uh, the government gave undertakings that it would halt all new oil and gas licences and consents. Yes, I, I mean, that's what they, they always say. Uh, that is the stated aim of their group. It's very narrow. It's quite different to Extinction Rebellion, which is a, a very broad church of a protest group with lots of different demands. Um, but Just Stop Oil is exactly that. They, they want the British government to say no new oil and gas licences, no new oil and gas extraction um, from the North Sea, no new shale gas revolution. Of course, it puts them entirely at odds with the Conservative government's plans for ushering in a new era of fossil fuel mm. exploration in the UK amidst an energy security crisis. Um, Just Stop Oil argue that the United Nations and other agencies um, say that in order to keep 1.5 degrees of warming um, within sight, in order to limit the very worst of, of global warming, uh, no new fossil fuel can be extracted, and that the UK is failing in its moral and practical obligations by even considering expanding um, oil and gas drilling in the North Sea, uh, uh, and for example. And they are getting increasingly um, inventive and daring in their tactics. They are usually focused on massive disruption, and I think it's a mistake to worry about what they think about the public and the public's support. You know, the point of this for, for these protesters, as they've told me a number of times, I've been out with them on, on a number of protests, the point is to cause disruption and outrage in order to keep the conversation going and focused on their cause. Um, but what's happening now, which is interesting, 
is that in addition to these mass disruption protests, climbing bridges, locking themselves to oil terminals, breaking into oil terminals, gluing themselves to roads and so on, they're also starting to target cultural institutions. And we saw that earlier in the week, didn't we, when a couple of activists threw a can of soup on Vincent van Gogh's sunflowers painting in the National Gallery. Um, and glued themselves to it. Now, of course, they knew um, that it, the painting was protected by glass, um, but it was designed to cause, to provoke outrage and, um, and to gain attention. Because a number of these protesters have told me recently that they actually feel that their standard tactics of blocking roads, and that certainly happened earlier today in London, just aren't getting the attention they want. So they are now starting to put themselves at increasing risk for a cause they believe in, but of course it's causing huge public backlash. The Prime Minister has condemned it. The police often say that they put themselves and police officers in danger um, and that they suck up huge amounts of time uh, and resources. Um, and there is real public dismay around these actions, um, I have to say. Lots of people who support the cause, um, but, but real difficulty for lots of people in, um, in accepting the, the huge amount of disruption to daily life as people try and go about their business. Yeah, and uh, we just saw Hannah, uh, one of the protesters, being uh, uh, put into a police van, no doubt uh, under arrest, and the other one is coming down. I should just say, Hannah, that a statement has been issued by those two protesters saying, we successfully disrupted oil supplies to Kent and the South East for 36 hours, and we're stepping down now. But other supporters of Just Stop Oil will be stepping up day after day, causing disruption and putting their liberty on the line to demand that the government ends new oil and gas. So we'll uh, leave the police to sort out that last uh, protester. That was their statement. And um, uh, that is the scene at the Dartford crossing. <laughs>